All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Friends, St. Paul said, let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And when we stop and think about the wonderful things that Jesus did, how it was that he could heal the sick and feed the multitude and even raise the dead, the idea of having the same mind is attractive to us. For there is none who would not like to do what Jesus did. There are many situations in life when we feel inadequate to solve our problems, when we feel incapable of doing the things we are called on to do. And because of this, we all are searching to find a power greater than we are, a power that can help us to do the things that we would like to do. Jesus explained to his followers that he of himself could do nothing. It was the Father within him who did the works. Jesus had found an inner source of spiritual power that he could draw on. And we should be encouraged by the fact that Jesus told us the same power was in all men that was in him. So those of us who have studied the meaning of his words and have tried to understand this thing called life have desired to discover within ourselves this spiritual essence, this Father within us, this power that can heal and make whole. Now sometimes the very simplest things in life will teach us the greatest lesson. Perhaps there is a good illustration in the common magnet, an illustration that will help to explain our oneness of, with God and help to reveal to us the unlimited power of a spiritual magnetism which we all possess. All of us have seen a magnet. Perhaps we have wondered at the invisible power that makes the needle turn toward the North Pole. To those who do not understand the power of magnetism, it is a mysterious thing that the compass needle should always turn toward the North Pole. But if we understand the way it works, not only does it remove the mystery, it provides us with a better understanding of the relationship between our thinking and the mind of God. It isn't by an accident that the compass needle turns to the North Pole, for there is an intimate relationship between the needle and the pole that draws it. This relationship is explained when we realize what it is that the magnet does to the needle. The magnet makes the needle like itself. The needle is composed of countless numbers of tiny particles called molecules. And these particles are in a constant state of motion. The reason that the needle is pulled toward the pole is because the magnetism of the North Pole moves all these tiny particles in the piece of steel in such a way that they move in the same direction and in the same direction as the particles or the molecules in the North Pole. And when these tiny particles in the compass needle are moving in the same direction, when they are moving with the same motion as the particles in the North Pole, then there is an activity in each of them that is exactly alike. The magnetic power of the North Pole directs the action of the molecules in the needle that is drawn to it. It is just as if the magnetic power of the North Pole were flowing through the needle and directing its course. For you see, the needle then is being guided by an invisible power and a power that is greater than it is. This is an important thing to consider in the relationship between the needle and the magnet. Before the magnetic power began to direct the tiny particles or the molecules of the needle, all these molecules 
were going in different directions and they were in a state of confusion. They were active all right, but their activity was not pointed in one given direction. Now, just as soon as the invisible power of the magnet begins to flow through and flow through the molecules of the needle, they are brought into harmony and into order and they begin to move as though they were one with and a part of this invisible force. It is wonderful to realize that a magnetic force at the North Pole, thousands of miles away, can reach into the heart of a needle at such a great distance and bring all its inner parts into harmony and give it purpose and direction. Let's see how this illustration from nature would work to teach us a great spiritual lesson. Instead of thinking about the North Pole as a magnetic center that draws needles, let us think of the mind of God as a North Pole for each one of us. It is a magnetic force that draws everyone upward and onward. Just as we think of God as the universal magnet, let us think of ourselves as being the compass needles which can be guided by this divine intelligence when we permit it to magnetize us. Now let us remember that before the compass needle pointed to the North Pole, the molecules in it were in a state of confusion. Now isn't this pretty much like our own minds? Before they become magnetized by the mind of God, our thoughts are like the molecules. They are in a state of confusion because each one is trying to go on its own, so to speak, as though it were detached from the central power. Our fears are pushing us one way, our desires are pulling us another way until hope itself becomes frustrated with despair and we don't know which way to move. But if we would just walk apart for a moment, just for a moment of prayer, and say as Jesus did, Father, thy will be done, not mine, then the same thing would happen to us in an instance, in an instant that happens to the needle when the magnetic power begins to make it right inside. And let's be comforted by this thought. The magnetic power of the North Pole did not judge the needle. It didn't ask it whether it had been good or bad, or whether or not it had made mistakes in the past, nor did it make it wait for a long period of trial or endurance. It simply made everything all right by its own presence, and it did this in an instant. Now the magnetism of God is just like this. It doesn't test us, find out whether or not we are worthy of its presence, nor does it ever withhold itself until we have proved ourselves worthy, nor does it ask us whether or not we have been good or bad. It stands eternally ready and more certain than the North Pole to put things right in our lives and in our minds. And how simple and how right all this seems. And we are blessed even beyond the needle. We are blessed because we are conscious and we can reach out in faith and say, Father, here am I. The moment the very instant we open our hearts and our minds to the magnetic power of God, then the nature of God flows through us and gives purpose and direction to our lives, and it dispels fear and fulfills our hope. It covers the shadow of defeat and uncertainty with light and joy and radiance. Now the needle that is drawn toward the 
magnetic pole loses nothing of its own being, nothing is ever taken away from it, that is, nothing except its inner confusions which are healed. And when we in faith and trust and confidence become magnetized with the power of God, we shall lose nothing of the joy and the happiness of our lives. Nothing is taken away from us but confusion. And who among us would not be free of the inner conflicts that have brought only despair and heartache into our lives? Yes, letting that mind which was in Christ Jesus, which is the magnetic mind of God, be also in us, is a matter of affirmative prayer and of right thinking. Think what a wonderful thing it would be if our lives were governed by the perfect mind, the mind that knows only happiness, only beauty and wholeness. And each one of us has a divine right to expect this magnetic relationship for himself and for others. And if we would stop and realize it, most of us already have used this magnetic power in one way or in another. We have sat across the room from someone, someone who is laughing, and the laughter has reached our ears and something within us has responded to the joy and the music of the laughter and has made us a part of it. Then we wanted to laugh too. And the reason we wanted to laugh was that the magnetic power of the laughter flowed through us because we listened, and it touched our minds, and it became a part of us. We, in turn, can become magnets of joy and happiness. For, you see, when we laugh, then the magnetism of our laughter readjusts the mental molecules of sadness in others, so that their minds also point to happiness. The same thing happens when we talk with someone who is peaceful and calm, when we come into his presence, perhaps in a state of confusion, but simply by being in his presence, we become magnetized by his serenity, and we begin to feel peaceful. And all about us, there are positive magnetic poles that can pull us in the direction of greater peace and more power and better health. Everywhere in life, there is goodness and there is beauty. These are the magnets we would have order our lives, for these are all part of God. And when we say, I and the Father are one, we become magnetized by the life of God. For as surely as the North Pole calls to the needle, so surely the Spirit calls to our minds as though it were saying, Permit me to enter. We all feel this call, and whether or not we know it, all of us are in search of something, something that can make us whole. And there seems to be something in us, something even in our most distressing moments, which knows that there is a power greater than we are, and it knows that we can turn to it. Let's see then just how this would work in practical experience. Suppose we should find ourselves in confusion inwardly and surrounded by confusion outwardly until our thoughts are like the molecules in a piece of steel that we're going first one way and then another way and getting nowhere. Now, instead of fighting the current of the stream of life, how much better it would be if we would sit on the bank for a while and find a place of peace in our minds so that when we re-enter the stream, we shall be carried along by its current to a notion of fulfillment. But just what should we do? if we find ourselves in the midst of this confusion. First of all, 
we should realize that there is a power, a divine magnetism, which can heal our confusion. We do not have to heal it. We have to point our thoughts toward the power that can. So we may say to ourselves, God is not confused, and my life is God's life. God is infinite and perfect peace, and this infinite and perfect peace governs my thoughts and my actions. And because my thoughts and actions are governed by the presence of a peace that is never disturbed, I know that whatever confusion there is shall pass away. Let's live with this until it becomes real to us, until there is nothing in our hearts that argue against it. Let's live with it until we feel and know it without question. Sometimes we have to tell ourselves over and over again what the truth is. But let's do it. Let's keep at it until peace comes. Jesus said to pray without ceasing. And so as often as necessary, let's be quiet and know that God is peace. And as surely as we do this, peace will come. Let's see how this works out in acquiring self-confidence. For just as surely as this principle can be used to bring peace into our lives, it can be used to bring us confidence. If we are lacking in confidence, it is because our thoughts have been demagnetized by our defeats and our failures. Now let's magnetize our thoughts with faith. We can do this by realizing that life is never uncertain of itself. The universe in which we live is certain. Every star and planet, every blade of grass and every sunset reflects the certainty and the authority of life. We are drawn and governed by the same life and the same certainty. Now the following statements will help us to make this confidence real. Divine life sustains me. God's presence is the certainty of everything I do. Infinite intelligence directs me, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we do this, we shall obey the law of good, which at once will begin to serve us. Without laborious effort, the divine magnet moves silently into the stream of our lives, and we awaken to a new confidence, which gives us the faith and the courage to live a victorious life. We realize that God is the infinite magnet. And when through our thoughts and our faith we are drawn to God, then never again will we have to walk in the shadow of fear. But we shall be drawn by the infinite shepherd into the influence of that mind which knows no doubt, no fear, and no uncertainty, the all-conquering power of good. I want to tell you how happy I am to be with you and how I look forward to this hour. Because of your cooperation, our program is blessing many, many thousands of people. And I want to be certain that only, not only these Sunday talks reach you, but that our lessons are sent to everyone. For here is something that you can study during the week, something you can apply. I would like to know that you are applying these lessons and applying them for others as well as for yourselves. I feel that this is the greatest experiment perhaps you have ever made and perhaps the one fraught with the greatest good Always when we receive a blessing, we should share it with others. Now let's see how much of this sharing we can do this week. Send for your lessons. After you have read them, distribute them among your friends. In this way, the good you have received will be multiplied many times. And then your friends will pass the lessons on to other friends. So the good continues. Let's see how much of this good we can do together.
Let us take as the thought for our meditation today these words. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And let us be drawn so completely into the force of the divine magnet that every thought and action shall be at one with the divine presence. The Father and I are one. This I know to be the truth. And so I open my mind and my heart to the inflow of the divine spirit. And I know that the presence of God flows through my being with perfect action and in perfect union with good. Every function, every organ and every cell of my body respond to the magnetic pull of wholeness of unlimited energy and perfect life. The love of God fills my being and reflects the divine harmony that guides my footsteps aright. Divine intelligence inspires me and gives me guidance to do the good that I would like to do in my life. Divine wisdom illumines me and infinite energy activates me. All that I am and all that I have responds in complete givingness to the magnetic pull of divine life.